What? Wait, what? Wait, what? Watch out, camera. I couldn't get out of the way from that! You're high. Payday 2 is extremely oh playable. God, you're blown. You're so right. You're so <laughs> Well, I hope that looked cool, because I tried cropping myself about 300 times by hand. <laughs> hey there, you like DLC? You like DLCing all this shit? <laughs> he really? <laughs> can't even like where, where do i go with that listen i understand that payday 2 is a game that's filled with the brim of dlc but at least it is not as bad as the final price of buying dlc for a sims game like no seriously but like compare to this price look at this you tell me if that's fair like that that's an old ass game and you're telling me you want a thousand dollars for dlc Meanwhile, you could just pay $20 for Payday 2 and the Legacy Collection Bundle, and you'd be able to just have all the DLC that existed in the game roughly around its release to 2016. Like, it's still a pretty good chunk of DLC. And despite that, all the collaborations in the game, just amazing. I mean, you got stuff like John Wick, Point Break, Hardcore Henry. I... I need to see that movie. I think Jimmy's a cool character. I think my favorite collaboration of all time had to have been Hotline Miami. I think Evil Eye and Hot Pursuit are my favorite tracks of all time. And I don't care if fans of the series go, it's not even the tracks from the series. You know what, I'm willing to say this right now. I've spent about $20 on Hotline Miami 2 for the deluxe edition only for Jacket. And I do not regret it whatsoever. You don't pay me enough oh, to No, I, I, I forgot about the mod. I forgot about the mod. You know what, no. Fuck Payday had a lot of good collaborations. They really couldn't go wrong with anything else besides what the fuck is that? No, 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 seriously, what- what the fuck is that? This was gonna be about collaborations, but I guess we're doing this now. Okay, let me just be clear that before going further into this video, this is not a video about how Ethan fell off on the landscape of YouTube. This is a video about his DLC for Payday 2. I'll probably only bring up one thing that he has done in his career that could have negatively affected this DLC's existence, but that's basically it. If you're looking for a video that talks about the fall of H3H3 Productions, there are plenty of other videos that could do a way better job than I ever could. Okay, uh, understandy, comprende, uh, anyways, uh, back to the video. Payday 2 and its community is well known for its April Fool's jokes. Like the Cash Ketchum character pack, that's obviously just meant to be Ash Ketchum. With the special utility they bring to the table, like the Capture Cube, rather than exploding, the new type of grenade allows you to keep any cops you've converted for a later date. The Taste Chew, who needs a blunting weapon when you can just send 6,000... 600,000 volts into someone, knocking them unconscious. So you could shove them into a tiny container. <laughs> Oh my god. And the Pack Rat perk deck. Honestly, any perk deck would be better than Hitman at this point. Then we've got some visual representation and some achievements like useless. Turned around doing nothing for an entire heist. There was also the Payday animated series. I don't even care if this wasn't going to happen. I'm just pissed that this music isn't something that plays while you're in the middle of a heist. I mean, listen to this. And I'd be lying if I didn't say it was fucking awesome to see the Russian Badger be in charge of making this year's April Fool's gag, reenacting the business card scene from American Psycho, with also the voice actors of Hoxton and Dragon just being there too. Also, he's the main reason why we have the comically large spoon in the game. This fucking aged poorly. Reddit's down the hall to the left. This... the... The joke is dead! Let me take you back to April 1st, 2017. Originally as a well-thought-out April Fool's joke, with things like his melee just being a backhand, his vape where taking a hit will unleash a cloud of toxic smoke, any unlucky victims before you will feel faint as their circulation fills with your secondhand vape smoke, and make them fall to the ground. To be honest, this just sounds like the modern-day Viper Grenade. 
With the character pack also introduces these beanies, which I'm a very mature person, don't ask me why, and also a couple of voice lines too. Guys, come help me, dude. I'm all out of vape juice. Hey, how do I turn on the music on this thing? Is this, oh, sh this is a pager? Yo, what the hell, what year is this? My bad. And all for the low price of $420. Liar! Fans quickly realized that the voice lines that he was saying was actually just recorded for this April Fool's joke at the time. And obviously, people were asking for this to be a real thing. H3H3 character pack. Character pack. Ethan Klein. I, I was also asking for Cash Catchem to be a, a real thing too, but I never got that. I never fucking got that. But if the stars couldn't align any better or for worse, H3H3 was going through several different legal disputes within the year 2017. Like the one where he was being sued by Matt Haas, where he was criticizing his writing and acting in his videos being compared to a porn film. How would you like me to shove this up your ass? I'm not into fist fucking, but thank you for the offer. Oh, he's not. <laughs> he's not wrong. He's not wrong. There was a legal dispute for this. Like this entire thing was a landmark case that would have just been considered what would be fair use, what would not be fair use. Like this guy was willing to spend money on a lawsuit that could forever change the grounds of copyright rather than just use that money to hire a fucking script writer. <laughs> Jupiter, yeah. After this entire fiasco, Ethan spent a good chunk of his money countering the lawsuit. And it's gonna take up to two years to complete the whole trial and it's gonna cost us up to $100,000. Then we got this. You know what, I'm skipping these steps because I don't care about Ethan. I really don't care. But what I do care about is that all the proceedings don't actually go to overkill. I mean, you think it would be split 50-50, but no, 100% is going all to H3H3 Productions. So if you're like me and just bought the DLC thinking you were gonna support overkill, you're shit out of luck. But you know what? The more I kept using the H3H3 DLC, I started to see huge glaring problems this DLC had to offer. Almost as if the entire DLC not only felt underwhelming, but also just unfinished. And it doesn't help either that Ethan's online persona hasn't aged well in the online landscape since 2016. I mean, despite the negative and mixed reviews this DLC has received, I'm pretty sure if the user-defined score is psychological horror as the first thing, I, I don't think that's a good... I don't think that's a good sign. Oh wait, no, I did find at least one positive review. Soup Time decided to spend five dollars on this DLC, making him tonight's BIGGEST LOSER! <laughs> They're all like that. All the positive reviews are actually just negative reviews in disguise. <laughs> Not joking. So to go and reiterate, Ethan and Hila had full control on what the DLC had to offer. We figured out the character, the weapon, the deck. We planned it all together. We planned it all together. We planned it all together. First, let's go over the gun. What the hell is this? The airbow is just a crossbow that can hold up to six shots instead of one. Now, all the things that he would have wanted to add, why was it the airbow? Here's my personal theory. Ethan, it's great to see you. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, so uh, people were taking big interest with the April Fool's joke, and uh, we yeah. just want to make sure that uh, if yeah. the DLC will be able to sell well, we, we have to make sure that the character pack is able to hold on its own. Sure, just give me whatever's viable, Nate. That's what I want. Uh, viable? Yeah, Nate, whatever people were using in the meta, Nate, that, that's what I want. Like, that's it right there, Nate. Uh, okay, I think we can try fitting something in there, but I don't Kiyosu see why you want- Kiyosu put my wife in the game. Uh, she doesn't look like she wants to what be here. What do you think, sexist or something, Nate? No, no, I'm just saying. I, I, I wouldn't mind. It's just. Oh, that's your favorite piece of cardboard. She always brings it, but I don't like no why. I uh, bet that is. You want to see a bird vagina? No, 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 no. So here's my personal game theory. 
I think what Ethan was asking for was whatever was popular within the meta back when the DLC was being made. Mind you, 2016 for Payday 2 was a golden age for updates. Not only was the entire skill tree system reworked, but the difficulties in the game were too, while also introducing a new difficulty called One Down. And then that was made to Death Sentence, and then you had to put in the One Down modifier, but that's besides the point. Because of this new difficulty and the new skill tree rework, this was pushing players to try to find what was viable within the meta. If you asked a Payday 2 player what was the most viable thing back in 2016, the first thing that would pop in their minds was going to be dodge plus crossbows. Most guns back then had a hard time killing cops in the one down difficulty when it first released. That's because they had three times the normal health they had compared to today. Mind you, the closest thing to a one down cop's health pool on release in modern day Payday 2 are cops on Wave 9 holdout. And even then, the holdout game mode is on the overkill difficulty. This matters because the headshot multiplier is completely different on overkill versus death sentence. And even if you did land your shots carefully and had the skills to maximize your damage, it was still a losing investment towards your total ammo pool. Crossbows did everything within the meta. They dealt so much damage regardless of skill point investment. Anytime that you shot a cop with a bolt, you could pick back up the bolt from their dead bodies so it was guaranteed to get your ammo back. And the skill investment to make them better was just just dirt cheap. All you needed to do to make these things better was just to have low blow basic for the potential crit damage and surefire ace to go through heavy SWAT units. Heck, if you wanted to, you could even invest in the body expertise also, because back then there was an oversight that allowed you to use any special weapon to get the headshot multiplier. Despite the fact that it was supposed to be only for automatic weapons, you could just put it on a crossbow anyways. But wait, you might be saying, you're telling me Ethan knows exactly what was viable within Payday back then? <laughs> Fuck no! If anything, he was probably just spoon-fed this knowledge by Almir himself, because roughly around the Halloween update of 2016, they nerfed the ever-living shit out of crossbows. So Almir knew, but Ethan did not know. And before you tell me, oh, maybe it's just because he's a bit of a political they start person that the doesn't again, actually I hope ben gets like gas using first. guns. I could just pull out a fucking minigun as Ethan and start gunning down civilians in this game. Shut the fuck up. He knew what he was signing up for. When the airbow first came out, the stats did have potential of being a straight up upgrade to the light crossbow until you looked at the concealment. Dodge builds need to work with a combination of skills Low Blow and Sneaky Bastard to even rival their armor build counterparts. In order for these skills to work, you need to start dropping your detection risk below 35. Basic builds work well with 4 detection risk, while ace builds work well with 23. And the air bow can't do that at all. Like, I'm running my explosive judge that I use for my one down dodge build. What the fuck is this? And I can't even make good use out of this if I have low blow and sneaky bastard ace. I was gonna stop here, but I went to the official Payday website to just grab a picture of the Arabo. But when I saw the stats for it, I was kind of shocked to see that the concealment was actually at 28 at one point in development. They didn't even bother to change this afterwards. And I understand with this change, they didn't want to completely invalidate the light crossbow. But the Arabo is left in such a really awkward spot. Dodge builds want to use it, but they can't take advantage of low blow ace. And mind you, most <coughs> dodge build enthusiasts look at something like a big LMG like they're a white woman looking at a serial killer saying to themselves, I can fix him. No, you cannot. Like, I see what you're doing. You're running the fucking Bernetti 9. Like, I don't care if it's got the highest concealment rate. You are making yourself look like a fucking dumbass. And as a armor build enthusiast myself, I need my dopamine rush. Sniper collaterals, point and click adventure games, Kurt Cobain's microphone, like, and this shit it just doesn't do any of that for me. Like, it's just not satisfying at all. Even then, I feel like I'm more likely to land my shots with the crossbow rather than the airbow. Maybe because the fact that I only have one shot means I have to make the shot count more than just spamming six shots. Or maybe it's just the accuracy. Like, even though 84 is good for most guns, it is dog shit on a crossbow. Like, I'm already worried about projectile travel time, but now I have to worry about shot deviation as well? That's too many goddamn factors! Just give me a shot!
Even if I did talk about the different ammo types for the airbow, it still wouldn't help at all, because it still is limited by the crossbow's downsides of using it. Explosive bolts sound promising at first, but it comes with a plethora of different downsides that are not listed within the modifier. Like changing it into an explosive makes it no longer capable of dealing headshots. And once you fire an explosive bolt, that that's it. The bolt is gone. Go find an ammo bag if anybody even carries that in pubs. And if you're just bringing explosive bolts to deal with shields, I've got tough news for you. It takes two shots to kill a shield. Call me a nerd for this, but I've been doing some numbers. Calculations, even. Okay, maybe I installed a HUD mod. So, you tell me how a crossbow with explosive bolts that deals 550 damage can't kill a shield with 480 health. Like, I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm just saying, it's a bit weird, but I'll ignore it. Just like how I ignored how jet fuel melted through steel beams. <laughs> <laughs> Poison bolts might seem promising at first. Although severely crippling the damage for only 100 per shot, it's guaranteed to inflict the poison status. Poison on crossbows deal about 250 damage per tick in a time span of 5.5 seconds. Even though the damage over time can be more than the default 700 on the default bolt, I'm gonna let you on a little secret. There is a better gun in the game that can do that. Tombstone Slugs and the Grim Shotgun. The Grim itself is a god-awful shotgun in terms of raw damage, but slapping on Tombstone Slugs gives it the ability to kill enemies from long range just from the guaranteed poison damage alone. Like, great fire rate, great ammo pickup rate. Like, just one little love tap can kill any cop on death sentence that isn't a special unit. Yeah, no, it is that broken. And all you need to do to get it is kill a hundred enemies with the Viper Grenade. Okay, that's pretty easy. Fully loaded, I think, can do that. I mean, reusable grenades and, uh, wait, the, uh, you need to kill 200 enemies with poison while wearing the scrubs outfit. All right. Yeah, no, just grab some fentanyl and are you fucking- You know what? No, no, no. You know, you also just need a complete no mercy while doing the stealth portion of the heist, too. Okay, yeah, no, 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 I'm sorry. You also need to find a straight tomboy goth GF that's also in the dark Damn, humor. Boy, you good at Fortnite. Yeah, no. That's another thing you need to find. Why do you need to unlock so many achievements for this Thing. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention that poison can actually stun enemies too. So if you just want something that could stun enemies, you are better off just using viper grenades on a grenade launcher. Heck, you're, you're better off just using the grenade launcher, period, on the primary slot if you're just gonna replace the bolts. Also, uh, this is kind of a funny thing to note. I didn't notice this until I was getting the footage for this, but they didn't even bother putting in an inspire animation for when you pick up teammates on the airbow. It's the same exact one, like, it's been like that since how long since the DLC release? My rifle copter goes Okay, so each character pack we usually do has a melee, so I was thinking, maybe go for the backhand that we have for the April Fool's joke. Eh, eh, it's so, like, boring. Why would you want that? Alright then, uh, what do you propose? How about a giant ruler? Cause, you know, <laughs> I rule. <laughs> and, uh, the stats on it would be... The best! It's gotta be the best. Yeah. And I hope you yeah. realize we are trying to go for a bit of yeah. realism, so yeah. you're not gonna be able to swing it as fast, okay? What? No, fuck you! I can take this rule and swing it as fast as I want. Check it out. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh! Is that fast oh. enough for you? I threw a bean curve. We gotta call her an ambulance. <laughs> like, what? No, we She's don't. losing all her blood! Yeah. No, we don't. Ethan, we can work chair. something out. Just put down Let's the gun. Let's DLC right here, huh? right huh? now. Okay. Melee weapon being the ruler, although it has the best stats a melee could have in the game, I think Mr. Almir Listo forgot to mention something to Ethan. That melee fucking sucks. Out of the 93 different melee options in Payday 2, there's only about 6 in-game that are considered to be good. 3 for raw damage, 2 for reliable stuns, and only 1 for damage over time. But for this, we're going to be focusing on the raw damage. 450 might seem like a good number at first. The only problem with that number is that it barely misses the damage threshold of killing a regular SWAT unit on Mayhem or above. And even if you did invest into one melee skill to make it stronger, you still have to deal with the painfully slow charge up time that most most melees have to even get that damage out. Unless you invest in the skills to increase your raw melee damage even further. I mean, you could also run Bloodthirst to get that extra melee damage for each kill, but are, are you really running melee at that point? 
So for this, assume you're like me investing into all the melee perks in the game that matter. Because of the slow swing speed, the ruler can't take advantage of the sociopath perk deck. With sociopath, if you're able to land a successful melee swing, you're able to get a times 10 damage multiplier off on your next hit. And that's for how long? Oh, okay. Because of how slow the ruler is, it just can't fucking land the hit. Oh my god, I fucking can't do this. Infiltrator can last for 10 seconds instead, but at that point you might as well just use a different melee weapon instead of the ruler. Like the Golden Spoon, which I, I really wish I was joking, but because of the fact that it does have the same amount of damage to the katana, and despite it not being able to swing as fast, the Golden Spoon is able to reach its max damage after 2 seconds of charge time rather than 4. And heck, why would you want to run a stupid ruler? Why don't you want to skewer cops with the American flag as your god-given right as an American? Or what about using a pickaxe where you're mining for shields like you're mining for resources? You know what? The irony here is that it's both made by Swedish developers. What the fuck are you looking at? How about we start getting kinky with it and start beating them with a chain? Fuck it, let's take the weapon the ruler was based on and that being the greatsword. I mean, it's still not as good, but the sound effects... You know, I don't care if people get mad for me saying it. I honestly think that sounds more satisfying than hearing an M1 Garand reload. Maybe it's just because of my monkey brain liking medieval stuff more. Nah, that can't be it. M maybe it's just because I wanna- Reclaim the Holy Land as my God-given right as a soldier of God! At this point, you don't even need a melee that could just deal 450 damage at most. Sometimes the fun factor could just be how stupid the melee is. Like, I'm just beating the shit out of these guys with a money bundle. Hey Dozier, I just got a call from Joe. Joe Mama! Get it? Joe Mama! <laughs> What's another stupid melee? I know what I must do. This is what you wanted from me? I, I can't look at a microphone the same anymore. Because every time I look at a goddamn microphone, it's always just boiling down Friday Night Funkin'. Look at all these wacky characters holding a microphone. I can't wait for that to be a Friday Night Funkin' mod. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> You're never getting this game. You're never getting this game! At this point, if I can make any melee weapon good in the game, then what's the point of even using the ruler? There's nothing even cool or interesting about it. It's just like the same exact ruler I smashed over some kid's head back in high school. It's boring, uninteresting, and nobody has seen it after the incident. I'm talking about the kid. <laughs> I feel like the April Fool's backhand was just a better melee concept than whatever the hell we got now. Okay, a perk deck centered around Vape Nation would make a lot of sense, and I think it would be the main selling point for the DLC. So, I was thinking... Oh, okay. Why are there two healers? Yay, I told you we didn't need to call an ambulance. Have you heard of the... My toes do something? Hey, when you cut a piece of the body, they just say... Reproduce okay, okay, so I remember that for our notes before, the April Fool's joke that we had for the vape, it was supposed to be a puff of smoke that would hurt the enemy, so I was they thinking- They hurt people? Yeah. Job what the fuck is wrong with you, man? Okay, what do you want it to be? Just just tell me, what do you want it to be? So, I was thinking- like, That's a dangerous <laughs> thing to happen. Vaping should heal me, right? Because I feel so good when I vape. So, they, they were so passing you a friend too, so they can heal too. So they, we just have like a tag team Oh my going. god, I, I didn't actually think about making a perk deck for Gila, but... That actually kills two birds with one stone. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm actually very smart when you, when you think about it. Is there anything else you think the perk deck should do? Yeah, what? Well, it, it needs to be a guarantee that you'll be able to live, right? Like, you can't just survive from healing alone. Yeah, so I was, like, thinking that I'd be completely invincible when oh it happened. God, what? And, like, also give me, like, a big, fat... Fucking rotorous cock. Oh my god. Make sure it's like a Ethan. corkscrew penis, dude. Ethan. But also make it so that my Ethan. tag team partner also can suck my cock anytime they want to. Like, Ethan! 
We need to make the perk deck balance. Also, this is a T-rated game. We can't afford putting sex in the game. Hey, Lee, it's your job to put something in, all right, Lee? I'm just giving you the ideas. This is kind of your fault, Lee. Just putting me on board, I'm just saying. Excuse me for one second. Lee, where are you going? Bathroom! <laughs> Nick, are you eating yourself now, Gila? You're not gonna save me a bite. This is the basic premise of Tag Team. Instead of having a good exploding grenade and shit like that, you, br you bring a vape. Because, uh, you know, <laughs> vape nation! Vape nation! <laughs> you know, here's a fun- Oh, god damn it. You know what, here's a funny thing to know. Ethan didn't actually make the vape nation meme, he just stole that off of someone else. Ethan, uh, stop stealing your jokes and stop telling the same ones and you should be good. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. The, the, the number one gem of, uh, of Ethan Klein, Vape Nation, was, uh, a stolen idea from a friend. Yeah, I'm not playing another second of Keemstar. With the vape, you're either able to tag a teammate or a friendly AI. Any kills you get restores your HP by 15 points. Any kills that your tag team gets is restored by 7.5 points. Any kills that you get while the vape is active also gives you points of absorption, up to 20 absorption. Although the vape has a cooldown of 60 seconds, every kill that you do get will both take out two seconds from the cooldown and add Add two seconds to your active tag team. Your tag team partner can also contribute as well for every kill that he gets also extends the current tag team duration. And I'm only telling you this because the description does a terrible job on telling you how long tag team actually lasts for. So what about this perk that can be fun? Honestly, trying to keep a single tag team up starts getting pretty addicting after a while. Like, the fact that I just have a tag team going and then just have another one ready out the get-go just feels Pretty cool, man. It's like pretty cool. Push a drug. A couple of grips I do have with the perk deck is number one. Why do I need to have line of sight to use it on a teammate? This is so aggravating. Okay, now I have line of sight, but even then, there's still range to it. Why does it have to rely on range and line of sight? It's kind of stupid because as soon as you tag someone with the vape, line of sight doesn't matter. I could be behind several different walls and I'd still take advantage of the healing effect. And I'm only bringing up line of sight because a skill like Inspire can be used to pick up teammates without having to put yourself into too much danger. Like, it doesn't matter that the range is only 9 meters. If you can still use it behind the walls, it gives you that reliable range that it will work within 9 meters. Meanwhile, using the vape... It's 18 meters, but on oh, line of sight, you gotta get close enough to the teammate. You're up against the wall, and I am the fucking loser! Half the time, I think I try tagging someone only to realize that the perk deck didn't go off. And then in a hurry, I try tagging a convert just to get something out of it. So not only can you not proc your own ability unless you have line of sight and are within close proximity of a teammate, but you don't gain any immediate benefits from using it. And most other perk decks that replace your grenade slot for an active ability gives you an almost immediate benefit, either from reducing the overall damage that you'd be taking or just not taking any damage at all. So overall, the reason why tag team is just a bad perk deck is because you can't take any immediate effects from it. Overall, the benefits I get out of the perk deck is from the vape itself, and if I can't use the vape when I need it, then fuck man, I don't know, guess I'll die. Like, if there's no teammates, and if you can't convert a cop in time, you can't make use out of health on kill, and you can't make use out of the absorption you get on kill. It's even laughable because support perk decks and payday are just bad. This is cancer. Crew Chief, although does get an exception, being able to provide a plethora of benefits, most importantly, damage reduction for every hostage you have, the only problem with it is that the perk deck doesn't stack with itself. So if more than one person is running Crew Chief, someone's already carrying dead weight on themselves. Maniac and Absorption absorption perk deck, although is more or less incentivized for you to stack it with other Maniac users, if everybody's running Maniac, you might as well just have an entire lobby running Anarchist at that point. And finally, a free perk deck like Gambler does tag team's job, but just automatic. Also, any ammo that you pick up restores your teammates' ammo pools as well. Like, you're just paying for a downgrade at but that point. But absorption's a really good stat, right? <laughs> right? If that's not a good enough answer for you, then let me explain.
Absorption is like damage reduction, but instead of working on a percentage base, it only works on a flat value. So 20 absorption is just minus 20 damage overall. If, theoretically, if you had a high absorption stat, you could take zero damage from any enemy in the game. But here's the problem. The developers knew that absorption could be broken if the number you could get was in the triple digits. So to balance it, the best you can manage by yourself is absorption at most with Maniac and Force Friendships aced. And on Payday 2's death sentence, if you were running something like the heaviest armor in the game, you're happy to know that you'll only be taking two shots before your armor breaks completely. That's- th that's it! What, you thought you were gonna tank all that damage with that extra health you've got? <laughs> Fat chance! What, you thought those 15 points of healing are gonna help you after each kill? Even if we were looking at the perk decks that exist beforehand with the similar concept of replacing the grenade slot, Stoic, although converted all of your armor into health, the perk deck gave you so much damage reduction. Instead of taking all that damage at once, the damage you would be getting is distributed after every second. And anytime that you hit the flask, you could just get all of your HP back from it. Although the perk deck itself doesn't have any way of being able to passively regenerate health, getting something like Hostage Taker is more than enough than you need with a perk deck like this solely based on health. And Kingpin not only gave you HP back from taking damage while active, but it gave you a huge damage reduction as well. Just sucks that you can't buy it anymore because you know if you ever have to do any crossover in video games you're always going to run the risk of not being able to renew the leases and forever leaving content behind a paywall and an invisible time limit you just can't see also i just want you to hear the description for these items that are tied to the perk decks for kingpin when consumed the user ceases to feel pain and becomes fearless the lack of pain lets the user rampage through the heart of battle longer than any other and the lack of fear making him a frightening and a oblivious threat of his enemies. Sicario. Drop one of these and you'll vanish into a cloud of smoke, leaving your enemies Whoa, struggling to take aim people. at you. Dodging bullets is a piece of cake when they can't see you properly. Stoic. An antique flask from 1882 bearing the inscription Stoic and JW Spirits, given to Duke in his youth when he was training with Buddhist monks. Duke kept it filled with his favorite whiskey, taking a swig of a symbolic gesture of calming and gives the bearer a moment of zen-like focus. That maniac has a and then tag team. A small gas dispenser that temporarily enhances the body senses and provides a healing effect for two out. Is that all? Like, Jesus Christ, even the description doesn't make it sound that interesting. You know what, good job, Overkill. You're able to make vaping in-game just like vaping in real life. And that being boring as fuck. And definitely not doing much to help your health either. Can I also just go on a tangent why people who vape have to be the most insufferable people to deal with? Like, nah, man, it's a lot healthier than cigarettes and it completely mills me out. Shut the fuck up. At least most cigarette smokers know they have a fucking problem. Like, dealing with most of these vape junkies is like, oh, it's, it's electronic, it's not that bad. You're fucking cooking your lungs with nicotine. But like, the main reason why these shitty plastic vibrators were made in the first place was to take the taste of tobacco out of your mouth and replace the smell of secondhand lung cancer with something more pleasant. Even then, why the hell do you think I want to smell where you just vaped? It's like taking a shit and not wiping your own ass afterwards. And if you want to keep lying to yourself, saying it's good for you, then be my guest. So like, just give somebody else that piece of oxygen in the ozone layer that's covered up so that we can breathe inside this blue trap bubble. Okay, I'm done. You know what's also stupid? I can't switch a tag team partner while tag team is still active. My tag team partner is just getting too many kills to the point where I can't switch the tag team. Like, I don't understand how difficult it is to switch between healing targets. I mean, we were able to do that since 2007, right? Overall, when I was using tag team, I found out that there was too many factors to consider while trying to synergize with my teammates. If you tag someone who is unable to score any kills on your behalf, the tag team could end too early. And if you don't get any kills while under the tag team effect to get any absorption, you're gonna be as useful as that wagey from the store you got that shitty dollar store vape from.
And that healing effect doesn't actually always help your teammates. In fact, sometimes it could just be more harmful than help. Anarchist is a pretty good example. I mean, the entire perk deck is all around armor. It takes a huge portion of your health and turns it into armor. So you're more incentivized to keep your armor up than to rely on your health to tank damage. And skills like Berserker can benefit you more the less health you have overall. Like, if you just want to be a team player, then you don't have to worry about the perk decks. Just worry about skills that you need to invest into. Bring a saw or shape charges depending on the heist, like fire starters. Run bullet storms aced on your ammo bag so more likely to suck your cock after the heist. And you can never go wrong with inspired ace. Like, that is like the number one thing to consider when trying to invest into a build. Either you run inspire or you don't run inspire. So many loud heists can be determined either from victory or failure depending on how many people have inspire. If just at least one has it, you have better chances than not having inspire at all like if you just want to be a team player just pick inspire don't pick this piece of shit fake fuck this Oh, and here's one more thing I forgot to mention. Copycat is a new perk deck that released in Payday around Christmas of 2022. This perk deck allows you to copy the first card of any perk deck. And one of the major upsides of Copycat is that not only can you give yourself more health than what Tag Team can give you, but you have a safety net after your HP drops below 50%. And just a trade-off of getting rid of the absorption points you would have gotten otherwise. And you wanna know something? It's fucking better! Copycat tag team is better than regular tag team because you can still forever keep the chain of tag team going as long as possible. Like, that's still a listed effect within the first deck of the card. Like, I mean, it's still got its downsides, like you still need to be within range and also line of sight, but it still works better because you actually get more health out of it than the fucking regular perk deck. WHAT THE FUCK?! Okay, I think I've covered everything about perk decks, so let's just talk about Ethan. <laughs> Alright, whoever threw this, I hope you have a god to pray to when I'm done with- Oh, god damn it! Leech is classified as support perk deck. Breaks your health in segments. Get a segment back after two kills. Pick your ass back up after in the dying state. Revive a teammate to stay alive! My body is now your communion! Heal from me! Heal from me! Oh, those 10 something minutes mean absolutely nothing now, huh? So, I was thinking, like, the things I should say are. Uh, I fucking knew he wasn't going to the bathroom. Like, he like, can you believe this fucking piece of shit? <laughs> Wait, wait? I don't even know where I come up with these edits. I think I'm actually schizophrenic. <laughs> Besides subjecting myself playing Ethan for this video, I've not seen anyone else in public lobbies play as Ethan at all. But in all honesty, have you even heard the lines he says in no game? No bones, no whispering and no masturbating. We may be in Washington, but England will always be my city. I feel like Shrek, and you're in my swamp. You can't take me out, I'll dab on the devil. Hey, Control, I think we should be looking out for Hugh Mungus. Hey guys, nah, I was just looking for my vape. Found it. Dragon, let's go hit the gym and lose that food, boy. Mmm, this will age well. It's like a 2016 time capsule for all the shitty humor that was said back then. God, those memes bring back bad memories. Oh cool, a schizophrenic episode. I wonder what happens if I just touch the book again. Oh wow, that is really warm actually. I this has nothing to do with the video! I'm actually having a mental breakdown! And funny enough as it is, I know I didn't bother mentioning Gila up until now, but there's a pretty good reason for that. She was originally not even planned for the DLC pack. And the only reason why she's here is because she's like a package deal. Ethan mostly doesn't go anywhere without her. There have been multiple times that she wanted to quit while she was in the middle of voicing her lines. Hey, yeah. And so the, after the first time, Gila's like, I can't do it. I Whoa. just, I simply can't do it. 
Yeah, but, but why? Because she her voice was tired, or just because she couldn't she reach felt the... incapable. She couldn't uh -huh. get into the character. She yeah. couldn't scream. She couldn't raise her voice. And I understand that fully. That she's not a very vocal person. I mean, most of the time I've watched H three H three back then, she rarely even talks on camera, despite being next to Ethan almost all the time. But funny enough as it is, despite the fact that you're supposed to be the star of your own DLC pack, do you want to know what's something funny? I've seen more Gila's than I've seen Ethan's in public lobbies. Maybe because there aren't that many female heisters in Payday unless you want to pick Bonnie as one of them. Maybe she doesn't utter some weird cringeworthy lines about a bulldozer being either humongous or big chungus or some other fucking oh reddit line out there. Like, as bad as the voice acting might be, her lines don't feel outdated. Hey, Control, um, I had this strange dream last night. I was some kind of a YouTube star. It's, it was weird. Pretty crazy. You know what, when you think about it, that line aged like fine wine. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ethan's lines have dropped faster than his reputation after the DLC was released. Okay, I know this is a video that I specifically said is not about the fall of H3H3 Productions, but this is the moment where I'm going to bring up that one thing I wanted to talk about. Remember, this entire DLC only came to existence because Ethan was going through a lawsuit back in 2016 when he was being sued by Matt Haas. Just a friendly reminder, this is not just a landmark case that would have decided what would be considered fair use on the YouTube platform, but also fair use within American law. Because, you know, YouTube headquarters is in California, yada yada yada. So what would happen if, let's say, someone made an hour and a half long video talking about Ethan, about the flaws of his character, and also the type of manipulative person he actually is? Gokunaru did that. And mind you, what he did was considered to be fair use. Gokunaru criticizing and breaking down Ethan's character is about the same thing that Ethan did when he was reacting to Matt Haas. I mean, definitely a lot longer, but what, what are you gonna do? White man here, how can you tell video essay? So what do you think Ethan did? He whined like a bitch, he goes to the former CEO Susan Wabachak! Huh? Huh? <laughs> and tells her to fix the website's harassment slash bullying guidelines, just to delete Gokunaru's video off the platform. I, I, I can't make this shit up. So it's okay for you to criticize someone, but as soon as somebody else does it to you, that's considered harassment slash bullying? <laughs> the entire point of the D uh, the, the entire point of the fucking DLC that I just talked about is fucking pointless. <laughs> Honestly, this is a serious question. How is this not even removed from the store page? Like, going back to it, I'm serious when I say this is like the most hated DLC. Like, also, I'm not alone in this. I thought that I was originally going to be supporting the developers too when I bought this, but no, I wasn't just the only one fooled by it. Just to reiterate, 100% of the profit goes to Ethan. If this DLC was just removed all of a sudden, I don't think people would rebel. I honestly think Ethan's character pack would probably be about the same celebration as people pissing on Margaret Thatcher's grave. I think within the Payday 2 community, the reason why people hate Ethan and Hilo the most is simply because they're the last two DLC characters added into the game. Actually, there's more to hey, that. Hey, hey, you forgot to pause me. <laughs> they weren't just planned to be the final DLC characters added to the game, but they were originally meant to be the final DLC, period. Ethan and Hila as two playable characters, uh, they're gonna be available this fall. So this is gonna be the last DLC for Payday 2. Right. What that means is that all the upcoming DLC for Payday 2 is going to be free. LIAR! You can even tell when you look at the year gap of DLC releases on Steam for Payday 2. The only reason why more DLC was made after the H3H3 character pack was because the publisher Starbreeze was filing for bankruptcy. Like, I'm not joking when I say that Payday 2 for the company was their only reliable revenue source. And not making any content for the game did stagnate the potential funding needed for Payday 3. But besides that, we got some pretty cool original characters, we got some fucking awesome crossovers, I don't care who says it. But as the final send-off being Ethan, especially for the kind of person he has become, there has been a lot of resentment towards his character even before his change. So much so that there's... <laughs> An entire mod that replaces the enemies with Ethan and Hila so you can live out your fantasy of killing them in a video game. In a video game. No, in real life! It's really a damn shame that the only April Fool's joke that we did get was widely hated by the community. What the fuck is this piece of shit?
both from what the DLC had to offer, both in the terms of viability and fun. And just like how the reason for the DLC itself coming to existence in the Vape Nation gag just aging like fucking pill. I find this entire thing just ironic. Very few April Fool's jokes become real in Payday 2. Heck, they're even lucky enough to have a mask bundle. And the fact that Ethan's wasn't just the first one to become a reality, but it's also been resented as the worst DLC in this game's existence. The fact that they gave Ethan so much creative control over what they should put in the DLC definitely sealed the deal of it just being bad from the start. I mean, he is a YouTuber, but he's not a YouTuber that knows anything about Payday. He only got famous after just making fun of SJWs or just crying about Keemstar. And I mean whining and bitching about Keemstar. This is a five, no, six hour long video? White man here, how can you tell? Video essay on YouTube drama. And after seeing how much of a shit show this DLC was, I think Overkill has taken these types of collaborations as a learning experience. Collabing with the Russian Badger for this year's April Fool's joke wasn't just a sign for better things to come, but Overkill's now started their own partner program that allows popular Payday content creators to have access and critique upcoming updates before they become public, both for Payday 2 and for Payday 3. I mean, if I've, I've been in the Payday space to know these names. Cloud Dasher, I had the pleasure playing with him in a pub. Wait! That's a- that's the fucking Elmir mask. Are you fucking serious? The Nolly, which I'll be perfectly honest, I only know him for his challenge runs and I, you'll always put them up whenever I want to go to sleep. <laughs> Sorry. Still happy to pay it a YouTuber. And oh, holy shit, fucking Mario in a top hat. That is crazy. I used to watch this shit all the time when I started playing this game back in 2014. So now if Overkill wants to work with YouTubers in the future, they'll make sure to work with the ones that are well known for making content around their game instead of this. H3's a hypocrite. I'm news, but I don't actually look at things beyond hey. surface value. I'm Keemstar. But I really... make news for 12 year olds. You know, there's one good thing to take out of this entire fiasco. And that's the fact that Ethan's not in Payday 3, baby. Yeah!